हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द थर्ड पार्ट इन लीवर एस वेल सीरीज इन दिस पार्ट वी विल कवर अबाउट हिपैटिक हिमेंजियोमास सो फ्रेंड्स इट्स अ कॉमन सिनेरियो दैट यू आर सिटिंग इन ओपीडी एंड अ पेशेंट विल कम टू यू विद अ अल्ट्रासाउंड रिपोर्ट इन हैंड दैट देयर इज दिस लीवर लीजन रिपोर्टेड हिमेंजियोमा मेजिंग सो एंड सो सो बट शुड बी द फर्दर प्लान ऑफ मैनेजमेंट or you may get a referral from obstetrics gynae that uh, we have this lady uh, with the priming rhabda and having a massive hemangioma of 10 into 15 cm so what should be the further course of action so there will be many question uh, around this lesion i will try to answer all of them so stay tuned so we will start first with a clinical case scenario and as i said earlier also so that these are real time uh, real life case scenario which we try to share so that you can understand the practical aspect of these discussions better so we had this 49 of female who presented to us with history of a dragging sensation in right upper abdomen for last 2 years history of early stiety 6 months awareness of lump for last 2 months she also gave history of purpuric spots and gum bleeds occasionally there was no other positive history and i have no disclosures some of the opinion expressed are based upon my personal experience in case of any discrepancy please refer to the standard textbooks i hope you have already watched the part 1 and part 2 in this series if not do watch them now to have a better perspective and better understanding coming back to the case scenario again past history and personal history family history were non contributory the general physical examination was unremarkable on abdominal examination there was a ill defined lump in the right upper abdomen which was moving well with respiration it was not tender and the rest of the examination was normal the routine blood work blood workup revealed low platelet count of 45000 Uh, rest of the blood workup was normal including the coagulation profile and we also did a d dimer assay and fibrogen assay which was uh, which were normal so this is the ct scan report of the same patient and i'll read it for you so liver measure 26 cm in craniocaudal extent enlarged in size nodular in outline and show possibility of ill defined heterogeneous peripherally enhancing lesion of size 9.7 into 9.8 into 16 cm in right lobe of liver involving segment 5 6 7 8 the enhancing part showed enhancement up to 100 and 110 hospital unit with the non enhancing part showing 30 to 40 hospital unit the lesion showing peripheral enhancement on arterial phase and wash out on the delayed phase so there was possibility of multiple foci of calcification within it posteriorly it was averting the right kidney with maintained fat planes posteriorly it is averting uh, also averting the posterior lateral chest wall however no erosion scenes anteriorly it is averting the uh, gb with loss of fat planes and medially it was averting the second part of duodenum with maintained fat planes okay so this is the uh, impression given that there is hepatomegaly with nodular outline liver with peripherally enhancing heterogeneous lesion liver showing wash out on delayed phase multifocal scc hepatocell carcinoma so, so i have shared the real report so that you can understand how these uh, patients are diagnosed what are the confusions so according to this ct we are dealing with hepatocell carcinoma which is contrary to the truth so these are the uh, basically cct images here you can appreciate that there is this lesion in the right lobe of liver which is uh, having peripheral nodular enhancement with centripetal filling in effect and we will discuss more about these uh, ct scan of the same patient in the discussion part of this video for the time being you can remember these images and have a basically uh, this uh, uh, photographic memory in your uh, brain so there are few more cuts uh, of the same patient here you can appreciate that the liver looks normal and there is no nodular outline He subjected this patient to mri for the abdomen contrast enhanced mri so again it reported hepatomegaly with t2 hyper intense and t1 hyper intense lesion in the right lobe of liver involving segment 5 6 7 8 showing subtle areas of diffusion restriction showing nodular peripheral enhancement with progressive filling in on delayed phases one of the larger lesion of the size 4.5 into 5 cm show central hypertension on t2 weighted images uh, likely scar 
and there were also leaves in the left lobe so there was contour bulge in the uh, right lobe because of this large hemangioma which was appreciated as a nodular outline in the ct scan and the impression here given was a hemangioma with multiple confluent lesions showing progressive nodular filling on delayed phase and these are the MRI uh, axial images of the same patient T1 veteran images and T2 veteran images so uh, we will discuss more about these findings uh, as I said earlier for the time being just remember these pics that these are nodular enhancement this classical light bulb sign abutting the GB and progressive filling in nodular peripheral enhancement progressive filling in which is retaining in the delayed phase so friends we have this patient of 49 female with liver as so well so, uh, we are dealing with a large giant hemangioma uh, with possibility of uh, Kassabak Merritt syndrome KMS Kassabak Merritt syndrome because we didn't have classical uh, features of Kassabak Merritt syndrome in the form of uh, conjunctive coagulopathy so uh, only there was thrombocytopenia so how do you plan this patient off though this patient has come to you these are the findings so make your plan but will be your uh, I mean further uh, course of action and we will share everything and we will also share short operative video clips at the end of this video and that will be in the second part. Friends coming to the discussion that is hepatic hemangiomas. The hepatic hemangiomas are most common benign liver lesion. So uh, which one is the most common benign liver lesion in MCQ? It will be hepatic hemangioma. So they are also referred as cavernous hemangioma based upon the histological features. They are cavernous uh, malformation. They are mostly asymptomatic. Most of these patients have an incidental finding. Giant lesions uh, that will be more than 10 cm in size may become symptomatic, but all not, uh, bit all, but all giant lesions will not become symptomatic. And the prevalence of these lesions is somewhere between 0.4 to 20% in the general population. The etiology of these lesions is uh, not completely understood. We don't know. These are congenital lesions and most frequently, invo most frequently involve the age group of 30 to 50 with female to male ratio is 3 to 1, more common in females. And there is a vascular mascul uh, malformation or hematomas of congenital origin which enlarged by ectasia rather than hyperplasia or hypertrophy. Having said so means there is a progressive dilatation, ectasia and there is no hyperplasia or hypertrophy of these vascular malformations. And some of these lesions will increase during pregnancy or during estrogen therapy. The exact mechanism of hormonal influence is unclear. In a prospective study, cohort study of 181 hemangiomas in which 91 were female, based on estrogen therapy, there were higher rates of lesion enlargement over time compared with unexposed patient that was 23 versus 10 percent. However, the estrogen receptors are not present in all hemangiomas and tumor growth demonstrated in the absence of estrogen therapy and in postmenopausal women. So all patients will not be estrogen dependent and some of the patient will have an increase in size irrespective of the estrogen exposure. So mostly these lesions are solitary involving the right lobe or liver but sometimes they can be multiple in 40% of cases majority are small less than 5 cm size and if the size of hemangioma is more than 10 cm then we label it as a giant hemangioma and as i said mostly these are incidental ultrasound finding symptoms when present will be right upper quadrant pain or fullness uh, is common less common symptom can be nausea anorexia or allistiety and with large hemangiomas compressing on the adjacent organ leading to the symptoms and symptoms will only be, only will be present when we are dealing with the large hemangiomas as such you can understand understand if the hemangioma size is small then it will not cause local compressive features rarely there can be these can uh, present with acute abdominal pain because of the thrombosis or bleeding that lead to the stretching or inflammation of the liver capsule and acute thrombosis may be associated with fever and abnormal liver function test. Other rate presentation can be hemovilia when the hemangioma ruptures into the biliary tree, then these patients can present with the uh, hemovilia. One syndrome that you have to remember in context to the hemangioma will be Kassabak Merritt syndrome, KMS. 
So it is a combination of giant hemangioma more than 10 cm with thrombocytopenia and conservative coagulopathy so that will be KMS and it is an infrequent complication more commonly seen in the infants and it can be fatal complication less commonly reported in the adults. So our patient was not qualifying all the three criteria. There was giant hemangioma, thrombocytopenia, but conjunctive coagulopathy, conjunctive coagulopathy was not there. So we could not label this patient as a KMS syndrome. Coming to the evaluation of these patients, the blood parameters are generally normal and rarely the LFTs in, LFT in abnormalities may be seen if a patient has complications such as thrombosis, bleeding or compression of the biliary in case of a giant hemangiomas. On ultrasound, these lesions will demonstrate well demarcated homogeneous hyperechoic mass with uh, the blood flow will be demonstrated by color Doppler only in 10 to 15 percent of cases. So although hemangiomas are vascular, but still uh, flow is extremely slow and usually no Doppler signal will be evident. So again, you have to uh, remember these things. So these lesions can be described as a no blood flow scene. Uh, so you have to remember this fact in your uh, mind. As I discussed earlier in the part 1 and part 2, the contrast enhanced ultrasound has a very promising role while evaluating the liver as well. So in CEUS, the peripheral nodular enhancement in arterial phase followed by partial or complete centripetal fill-in. So all these words you have to remember that peripheral nodular enhancement with progressive uh, or partial uh, centripetal fill-in in the delayed phases and enhancement is sustained through late phase of imaging. On CT scan, again, it will demonstrate findings similar to the contrast enhanced ultrasound that will be peripheral nodular enhancement in early phase followed by centripetal pattern filling in during late phase. Lesion classically opacify after a delay of three or four uh, uh, more minutes and remain isodense or hyperdense on the delayed scan. So, uh, I mean, you have to remember these characteristic uh, CT scan features of the hemangiomas and if these are there, then you can label these lesions as hemangioma without any doubt. So these are the CT scan images, CT scan images of the same patient. Uh, one will be a uh, larger film, another will be close-up view. So here you can very well appreciate the this irregular, well-defined lesions. Here it was a very large lesion. So uh, again, uh, nodular outline is because of the large lesion. Here you can appreciate, which was reported as hepatocellular carcinoma because of the nodal outline. So you have to be very careful while analyzing these lesions and mistakes can happen. So uh, this peripheral pooling nodular enhancement with uh, progressive centripetal filling in and it will keep on ac accumulating the contrast in delayed images. We will end the first part here. MRI onward, we will discuss in the second part and clinical case scenario with the operative findings we will also be discussed in the subsequent part. So with that, we have reached the end of this video. Uh, download our app uh, available for Android and iOS or join the channel membership for early exclusive access to a premium SD content. The link for everything is given in description of this video. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss about the FNH, uh, the hepatic adenomas and rest of the vascular lesions. So stay tuned. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the, uh, this bell icon for all the future updates. Thank you very much. Happy luck.